All righty, guys. All Facts Media here. My name is Andrew Robinson. I'm joined with my twin brother, Aaron Robinson. Today, we're joined by a special guest. We have Georgia Tech head men's basketball coach, Josh Paxton, on with us. How's it going, coach? I'm doing well, everybody. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Just before we start, I just want to give a great shout out, uh, obviously, in this uh, unprecedented time that we're dealing with, but to give a tremendous shout out to all the first responders, healthcare workers, uh, people that are keeping our society going with whether it's the stocking of the grocery stores, the, the truck drivers, the people working at the grocery stores. So just want to give a tremendous shout out to uh, everybody out there. They're all true heroes and just want to say a great thank you for myself and obviously from Georgia Tech men's basketball. Thanks a lot, Coach. We appreciate that. And we also echo those same sentiments uh, from here at All Facts Media. We definitely appreciate all the work that you force responders are doing out there. So thanks for that, Coach. Um, yep, absolutely. First thing we wanted to ask you um, was, you know, obviously, you, know, you were also a player before you were a coach. You know, you, you played for the head coach, Lou Olson, at Arizona. You won national title. Um, you obviously were at Memphis before you were at Georgia Tech. And kind of, we just want to know, you know, how did you get into coaching? You know, tell us about your journey kind of from a player um, and just how you were able to get into coaching and end up here at Georgia Tech. Well, a couple things. First of all, you know, I, I don't look at a day that goes by that, you know, that I look at my, my job as a job. I love what I do. I love being a head coach. I love coaching. I love being around, um, you know, young people and, and having an opportunity to make a really positive difference and, and a positive impact in, in their lives. Um, you know, not just only on the floor, but most importantly off the floor. But I remember when I was in about fifth grade, I remember I was talking to my uh, um, uh, father. I was actually watching the Lakers versus the Celtics and on one of those national networks. And I remember turning to my dad and saying, if I can't stay involved, if I can't play in the NBA, I want to stay involved in the game of basketball somehow, some way. And I said, the next best thing to playing is coaching. And, and so, yes, I worked my tail off to be a really good player, but I really put a lot of energies into being a coach. And so I had to, I was so fortunate that I started my college career at the University of Arizona as a player on the team that won the 1997 national championship. Um, we had guys like Michael Bibby, lottery pick, Jason Terry, lottery pick, Michael Dickerson, lottery pick, Miles Simon, who was most outstanding player, was the second round pick in, that, uh, in, 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 in the draft. Um, but, but we had a great team, won the national championship. I tell people still to this day, it's probably the best run in the history of the NCAA tournament. We beat three number one seeds, the only time in the history that ever to happen. We beat Kansas, uh, North Carolina, and Kentucky, three of the winningest programs, but all three number one seeds at the time. And we were the first team to win a national championship with the starting point guard being a true freshman, and that was Mike Bibby. So I was there. Had many great years at Arizona. I stayed on after done playing as, a, as an undergraduate assistant coach, worked my way up as a, grad, as, a, as a video coordinator and kept working my way up to becoming an assistant coach. And then I was fortunate enough to be able to be at, at Memphis as an assistant with John Calipari. So I played and coached under Lute Olson, who's in the Basketball Hall of Fame. And then I was an assistant coach with John Calipari, um, who's, who's in the Basketball Hall of Fame as well. I've learned under two incredible coaches uh, to allow me to give me a great transition going into having the opportunity to become a head coach. Now, you mentioned there, you know, and that's part of your answer. You obviously had the opportunity to play under Lou Olson, then coach under Lou Olson, and then coach under John Calipari. Obviously, two of those guys are, you know, who else are they in the Hall, in the Hall of Fame? And Calipari is on his way there soon, you know. So how – what, what, if anything, have you been able to take from those guys coaching-wise, you know, implement it into your schemes? Yeah, and, and, and you know, so both guys are e elite at what they do, elite in the profession. You know, both guys, Hall of Fame guys. Um, and, you know, what's interesting, guys, you know, you, you, you can study businesses, um, head coaches of all different sports, football, basketball, baseball, um, you know, hockey. It doesn't matter. Uh, soccer. Um, or any other forms of, of where you have leadership involved. And what you find is there's, there's many different ways to get to the end result. I mean, many different styles of, of leadership. But a lot of times they all have some of the same common denominators, which makes them so successful. And for an example, like a Lute Olson and John Calipari, 
as maybe as different as both guys are, they're so similar in, in, in some of the ways they saw how to have success at what they were doing. They, they, they kept the game very simple. It wasn't overly complicated. They were great recruiters. You know, you can saw, all talk about the Jimmys and Joe or the X's and O's, but it really comes down to the Jimmys and Joe's. You know, it's a personnel game. It's a, it's a player's game. Both coaches had great guards. Everything's a guards game. You got to have really good guard plays. You guys know that. You played. You understand. It's a, you can have great big men, but if you don't have great guards, it's, 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 it's hard to win. Both coaches had, had believed in guard play. And both coaches' teams obviously were really good defensively and really good uh, on the glass. But, but they, as, mu as much as they were indifferent, in those were a lot of the similarities that they had. And they both achieved uh, to the highest level, both as individuals and as coaches, as team coaches. You know, they're in the Hall of Fame and they've won national championships. And um, now look, what I would tell people is, like when I became the head coach at Memphis, I, um, you know, I, I didn't want to be the head coach at Memphis. I was excited to be the, the assistant coach at Kentucky with Coach Calipari. Um, <laughs> nobody wanted to be the head coach at Memphis. He had won 95% of his games the last four years at Memphis. It was the most wins in the history of a four-year time period. You know who wants to follow John Calipari? No, they want to follow the guy that follows him. And so – but because nobody wanted to follow him, I was the last man standing. I got the job. I was at the right place, right time. I got lucky as heck. Man, I got really lucky. Just like I got really lucky being at Arizona. And I understand, and I don't take it for granted, not for one second, that, that, that the position that I got, I was in right place, right time, got lucky. Some doors opened for me, um, and, and I was able to skip some steps. Guys were – people were way more deserving of the jobs, at, like the head coach at Memphis – way more than I was I just like I said I was there at the right time right place right time and then which allowed me to become the head coach as the youngest coach in the ACC I mean the best basketball league in the country but when I took over the job at Memphis I told people as much as I learned from coach Olson and coach Calipari I can't be either guy I have to be Josh Pastner yep. and I've got to be me I've got to do what I feel comfortable in my own skin I can I've got to take what I've learned from them and how to embrace that in our program. But my personality and energy, it's got to come from, from what I feel most comfortable with. So I tell people all the time, you got to be you. You got to do what you feel most comfortable with and in your personality and then go from there. Great, man. So, I mean, that's a heck of a story, man. I think, um, you know, obviously switching gears a little bit, like you mentioned earlier, I mean, what unprecedented times here with the coronavirus and um, the effect that it's had on sports has been, has been extreme, obviously especially college basketball, you know, you can't recruit right now. You can't have guys on campus. The spring off-season training period has been canceled. You know, the summer's up in the air. Um, so kind of specifically with your program, kind of how has this affected you guys at Georgia Tech men's basketball? No, you, you said it best. I mean, it's unprecedented. Um, nobody has, has gone through something like this, um, not obviously not only in sports, just in, in general life. And it's, it hasn't only affected sports. It's affected the entire world of – every aspect of everything that you could think of. Um, obviously for just, you know, directly tied to, to, to our sport of men's basketball, um, we shut down recruiting all the way, at least for now, through May 31st. Um, there's, you haven't been able, so the season's ended, you haven't spent any time with your team, you know, because all guys have gone home. You're not allowed to have, you know, obviously because of social distancing, you can't have any team meetings like physically in person. You can't have interactions with your guys in person. Um, and, and recruiting is all done via Zoom, via FaceTime, text messaging. So everything's through electronics. Um, even academically, everything has shifted from being in a classroom setting, whereas like a school like Georgia Tech, where we're known for, you know, be, we're the only school in Division One that plays football and basketball in Division One that just has a Bachelor's of Science. We don't have a Bachelor's of Arts. It's all Bachelor of Science because we're an engineering school. And so everything at Georgia Tech is about being in a classroom, learning how to be an engineer. So to, for Georgia Tech to have to go online was brand new, was, you know, have, they had to adjust. And our president at Georgia Tech, President Cabrera, did an incredible job at, at, at being able to, you know, change on a, on a dime, uh, boom, and had to make, adjust and switch everything. And it's been incredible to see it. But I say all that to say, um, everything's been new. It's, it's, you know, the old adage when you say take it one day at a time, yeah. really, that really is what we're all in. I mean, you, you can't look at it any other way because we don't know. 
each day as we go is just really one day at a time. So um, we're just doing the best we can. Everybody is with, with recruiting and with, you know, trying to stay in touch. And, and, and obviously, you know, people are asking me a lot of questions. Our players are asking a lot of questions. And, um, and you don't have the answers because everything, as I mentioned, is really one day at a time. There's a lot of still unknowns out there. And, you know, we'll just keep our fingers crossed that, um, um, you know, we'll happily have, as, as each day goes by, uh, we'll continue to get more information to, to get to our guys. But as of right now, pretty much sports is shut down. And that includes, obviously, especially for us, the sport that I'm in, college basketball. I mean, you know, you touched on it a little bit in your answer. You know, obviously, there's, you know, you guys as, as head coaches have to, you know, try to, you know, to have the best of your ability to keep tabs on your players, whether it's academically in the classroom, you know, yeah. workouts, you know, from a strength and conditioning standpoint, you know, from a skill standpoint, you know, what have you guys been doing to kind of, you know, keep up with your players' activity, you know, throughout this time period? Well, and you guys know this. I mean, you know, one of the things with basketball is one of the great things about our sport, and you both understand this because, you know, playing, playing it is just that, you know, you, all you really need is a hoop and a goal, and you can go to the gym and work on your game. The reality of it is all gyms are closed right now. Our gym at our school is closed. All health clubs are closed. You know, any, any gym is really closed. So if you don't have a hoop at your house, it's, it's you know, you're not able to get shots in right now. Um, and so you got to, it gives you a lot of chance to work on your ball handling. That's for certain. Um, <laughs> but, 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 you know, what we're doing is, is per the rules, they're allowing our strength coach to give workouts to the guys. They're not allowed to super, we're, we can't supervise, nor can we get any reports back. We're just allowed to give workouts for strength and conditioning. The NCAA also allows you, you're allowed to have team, a, a virtual meeting with the player to go over film work. So the, the access, though, of actual, you know, you know teaching and, and coaching on the floor is, is not there at this time. And um, so only time will tell as things, you know, loosen up or whatever it may be, will we be allowed to go back to having that access uh, to be able to work guys out. But obviously, um, you know, all those measures are going to be followed by the safety and well-being of what's, what's, which is most important for, for everybody involved because nothing's more important than your health. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously you play for, I mean, you uh, coached under Coach Calipari, you played and coached under Lou Olsen, which you mentioned are, you know, great recruiters and they were great at getting players in. And it's also been something that has been uh, something that you've been able to do well in your, throughout your coaching career is get talent into your program. So, you know, for you at Georgia Tech, you know, how has this whole thing affected the recruiting for you and, you know, you guys being able to bring players into your program? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, what I would tell you is, is obviously it's, as I mentioned, it's uncharted territory. It's unprecedented. I think um, you've, you've had a kind of, you know, go on the fly um, in a sense. Uh, you're taking a, um, you know, we've been fortunate that I thought we did a really good job in our 2021 class um, uh, because of seeing kids early, you know, obviously during the high school season and doing evaluation last summer and then having a lot of those guys on our campus for unofficial visits throughout the year at our games because there's a real possibility there's no more recruiting this summer. Uh, there's, a, there's a possibility that there just won't be allowed to be any recruiting this summer, and you don't know how long that could, that could last. I mean, could it, could it, could it, you, they could all say, oh, we're allowed, we'll let you go in September, but we don't know. As I go back to what I said earlier, there are so many questions out there, and really it's one day at a time. So thankfully we did a lot of work early in the 21 class because we're going to need to sign a, 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 a big 21 class. But you're going to have to decide a lot on recruiting through film. That's going to be important. And the other thing comes down to in recruiting uh, right now is, is, you know, there's a lot of transfers. The transfer portal is part of the recruiting process. You now, you know, if, you know a lot of times if you've recruited a guy, maybe he didn't choose you out of high school, but he visited you. you so now he's in the portal. He has a relationship with you. And because of – you're not able to visit, you're going to take, you're going to take uh, chances on schools sight unseen. So maybe if you've already visited that school, you could have an advantage. So there's a lot of moving parts. And then on May 22nd, there's a vote for this, for the waiver to go through for the one-time transfer, where if you transfer, you don't have to sit out. Technically right now you have to sit out unless you're a grad transfer or you get a waiver because of a, a circumstance. Yep. There's a vote on May 22nd that says that's out the window. You can go from school to school A to school B and not have and no penalty, not have to sit out. And if that goes through, that changes the landscape a lot. 
And so uh, be on the lookout for that on May 22nd uh, because that will change a lot of things. Because then what you're thinking in recruiting is you're thinking about, do I take the high school kid or do I wait till the spring and, and wait to go with the transfer who's, yes, he's older. Because my motto here at Georgia Tech is get old and stay old. And look, you guys, you guys know this. It's a player's game. It's all about players. It's a personnel game. But just by natural ability, uh, a 21-year-old is going to be better than an 18-year-old. That doesn't mean that the 18-year-old is not going to be better down the line. But immediately, a 21-year-old just physically is going to be a little more mature and just bodies grown into himself, you know, just by weightlifting and stuff. And so those are things you got to really factor into in the recruiting process moving forward. Touched on a little bit just now in your answer, you know, how do you think that at this rule, given this immediate eligibility, is going to affect, you know, the high school players, you know, as well as, you know, the, the players that are already in college, you know, the mid-major players, low-major players, all the way up to, to, the high, to the high major level, you know, just from a holistic standpoint, how do you think that this is going to, this is going to affect, you know, recruiting and college basketball, you know, as a whole? Yeah, you know, look, it's, it's going to really transcend the game. Now, look, I know there's a lot of people are, are, have said it could hurt the game. I, I'm a really glasses overflowing type of guy. I'm an optimist. I'm positive. I'm upbeat. So, so I look at whatever it may be. We just got to adapt to it. Um, and what I would tell you is uh, if, if, if the rule does pass, um, it, it really becomes – the head coach really becomes like a general manager in a sense like in the NBA when you're dealing with thinking about it as, as roster management because you've got to think about, you know, okay, I got to save a scholarship or two in the spring because you don't know who's going to become available. And could it, you know, so there's a lot of more thinking that goes into it. Um, and look, yes, it could, anyone from any school could leave. So whether it's a mid-major, low-major, high-major, without the penalty, guys can leave at, at any time. But if a guy leaves, you're probably going to get a guy on the other side. The thing is, is um, um, people have talked about it could be like a free agency deal, you know, yeah. kind of like the NBA where people are just moving left and right. Um, um, but I just think if you see kind of the landscape, how things are shifting, and I think I really believe that the train has left the tracks on this rule that it, whether it goes in this year or next year, it's going to, it's going to go in at some point and, and it will change college, but it'll change a lot of sports and we're just all going to have to adapt and, and, and deal with it. And, uh, and we just got to take a positive approach with it. Yeah. I think something else has kind of been on the horizon, um, is this whole, this new G League initiate, yeah. um, which is this idea where, you know, these elite high school players can now, you know, pursue professional opportunities in the G League as opposed to going to college. Um, and obviously this is going to have an effect on recruiting as well because a lot of these higher level schools that may be recruiting these, you know, one and done type of kids, I mean, there's, it's going to be hard because you're going to have to decide, all right, well, am I going to put my energy into recruiting this kid when in reality he might not choose to come here anyways? Um, so, I mean, how do you think that's going to affect recruiting? And, you know, what is kind of the mentality for head coaches now, knowing that there's a possibility that a lot of top talent might never come to college? Yeah, no, that's a fair question. Um, it's, a, it's a good question. And uh, right now at this, at this present time, you know, you have to technically go to college for a year, um, obviously, or you can go to the G League like we've seen. I do think in the next year or two, the NBA with the collective bargaining agreement is going to change that where you no longer have to go to technically a year of college before you go to the draft where you can go right out of high school. And that will change. And what we'll do is more change about the college coaches. Does the, do you go recruit the, blue, the elite top 10, top 15 player knowing that there's a good possibility you sign him, but he might never show up on your campus and do you say, okay, I'm not going to go after that guy and just go after the guy who's maybe ranked 50th in the country, but you know he's going to show up on campus because he's not going to be good enough to go right out of the pros out of high school or be drafted based on potential. So um, those type of things are going to be thought about in the recruiting process. It's going to be interesting. Um, there was even talk I heard that the NBA was possibly extending the, the draft to, from two rounds to four rounds because to, to entice more kids maybe to come out possibly. I mean, there's been talks of that. So, you know, a lot to be determined. There's a, just like, I mean, as you guys know, in sports, man, everything's moving constantly. Things are adapting and, and, and things are changing. Um, and you just got to keep, keep adapting and, and adjusting as, as things go. 
Now, obviously, you've been the head coach at Georgia Tech since 2016, was able to win ACC Coach of the Year in that first season, 16, 17. You got to finish fifth in the ACC this year, you know. What are your, what are your goals and, and, and aspirations for your program in the, com in the coming years here at Georgia Tech? Yeah, you know, look, I mean, we've, we, we finished fifth this year, uh, which is the first time in, you know, for we, we did some things in ACC play this year with Georgia Tech that hasn't been done at Georgia Tech in ACC play since the mid-90s. So we had some great accomplishments we, we achieved. And our, our young men, our student athletes were fantastic. My staff was just incredible. My, my, our administration, man, I mean, there were some tough times, but they've always stuck by us. And um, so we just got a really, really good group of people and culture at Georgia Tech all the way around. Um, so we're very fortunate to be part of that. I'm fortunate to be part of it. Um, so we got to keep moving the needle forward. Look, guys, this league is a monster. There's 15 great teams. I mean, it's, it's, there's so many pros come out of this league. There's multiple Hall of Fame coaches in this league. This is a hard league. And so I just believe our best chance of success is, one, you got to have great guard play. There's no question about that. But you've got to get old and stay old. And, um, you know, this past year we were a little bit older. This upcoming season we should be, you know, more older. And, um, um, you know, and you got to get some lucky bounces along the way. you got to get a break here and there. So I just want us to keep competing. Our next step, guys, is we've got to get into the N that NCAA tournament. That's the next step for this program to move the needle. It's been a long time since Georgia Tech's had their name called on Selection Sunday. And that's our next goal. That's our next step is we've got to try to do that. Very hard to do, but we've got to try to do all we can to get ourselves or put ourselves in a position to do so. Thanks a lot, Coach. That was the last question that I have for you. We um, want to thank you for coming on today. You know, we wish you guys the best of luck at Georgia Tech and accomplishing those endeavors. And uh, we know you guys have a great thing going there. So, you know, we appreciate it and wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys having me on. You both stay safe, stay well. You both look like you could go score 20 or 25 in a game right now. So <laughs> I don't know if you can defend anybody. I don't know if you still can play defense or not, but I know you can still go put the ball in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Coach. I appreciate it, man. If I had another year as with you, I'd come play for you down at Georgia Tech, man. <laughs> Sounds good, guys. I appreciate it so much. Stay well, guys. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Coach. Appreciate Thank it. You.